Hello, and welcome to Biker Bushcraft. I know it's been a little while since I put out a video. I'm finding the uh, final stages of recovery are taking the most out of me, and also had to take an eight to five type job to, to pay the bills here. So it's taken a little bit of my time to do the things that I really care about, like these videos. I also want to let everybody know where I'm at with my recovery. Um, obviously I can bend my knee. I'm in a knee brace uh, as of Friday. I am officially allowed to be off my crutches. I still use one to get around when I'm doing more walking, but uh, I'm getting around pretty well. I've got a lot of swelling in my knee, but I'm recovering. And I even got out the other day for a short ride on the bike. So I'm well on my way. Videos. I did a video some months back on the gear that I carry with me. One of my viewers, Cycle, commented on the fact that he planned to get out shortly and spend some time on the road. And I suggested I've upgraded a lot of my gear and so let me do an updated gear video so that uh, you can see what I'm taking along now and some of the changes I've made. You might find it useful information. So the first item, all of you have seen my bedroll. Carry it on the bars. I've got a couple of the quick release straps, which work pretty well. At some point, I'm probably going to upgrade these to leather and maybe even make a leather cover for this, but I'm not there yet. So this is the bedroll, and this is the key. Uh, this pretty much lives on the bike. And this is my camping gear. Now, my bedroll, contains quite a bit of stuff. First of all, I carry stakes and I carry some paracord inside the bedroll. The reason I do this, I can make stakes out of wood, it's generally no problem, but if I get somewhere, it's dark, it's late, I'm tired, I just want to set this thing up and be done with it. My oil skin tarp, and a lot of you have seen and commented on the oil skin tarps. I've had a couple of people ask me where to get them. This is a new tarp for me. This is a little bit different. Uh, you folks actually have not seen this tarp yet, and I haven't used this specific one. I had a company make some custom tarps for me. This one is a 5x7 lean-to with sides that go out. And I will be testing this soon. It's a little bit smaller square footage wise and therefore a little bit lighter to carry on the bike. And I think it's going to work really well. This is also very convenient for two people to camp. And it allows me to throw a mosquito net over the front really easy. It allows me to easily camp between two trees. But I also can connect it to the bars and the sissy bar on the bike and hook it up as a lean-to on the side of the bike. That's the plan. So you will be seeing more of this. Inside my tarp, I have an inexpensive ground tarp. It's really thin, really light. This helps insulate me from the ground when it's cold. It also helps keep my sleeping gear clean. It gives me a nice big surface to put all my stuff on and not have to worry about it just sitting in the dirt. And my sleeping pad. Now this sleeping pad came from Walmart. It's an inexpensive, I think it cost me $20, self-inflating, really comfortable, really compact, rolls up well in the bedroll. And I'm very happy with it. I would recommend getting one of these for a sleeping pad. Ozark Trails the brand. It's Walmart's own brand and uh, no complaints. So there it is. That's my entire bedroll. Folds up, rolls up, goes on the bars. When I get to the campsite, roll it out. You can see how easy it goes together. Put it up less than five minutes and I've got shelter. Really good thing when it's raining. 
Now let's talk about rain for a minute, since I mentioned it. When I'm going to be going somewhere where there will be rain, I've showed all of you this uh, 10 by 10 rain fly. Um, I've got a couple of options. If I want, I can tie this on the sissy bar. Uh, I can pack it or I can open it up and fold it into the bedroll. It doesn't add that much volume to the bedroll and it works pretty well. Most of the time, this time of year, I don't have to worry about rain and the oil skin is actually fairly waterproof. So it, I usually won't carry this, but it's an option and I have it in my kit. Also relating to rain is my rain poncho. Again, this is an inexpensive rain poncho, great for all kinds of things. Uh, just in general for setting up camp to kind of stay dry, stay warm, works well. It's really compact, fits in my kit. So I do recommend carrying a poncho most of the time, if not all of the time. Now for the next items. My Grand Forest Brooks small forest axe. Ties to the bedroll and my shovel, important, ties to the bedroll, carry it everywhere I go. You'll notice I've moved my blanket out of the bedroll. The reason I did that is the size of the bedroll. This is a 100% wool blanket, queen size 90 by 96. Very comfortable blanket. I carry one on the bike at all times. I also have one that I carry in my car all the time. Inside the blanket, I will typically roll up some spare clothes, some wool socks, maybe a t-shirt or two. Recently, I acquired a knife. My buddy over at Spider X sent this for me to review along with the knife that I gave out in my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I haven't tried it yet. I've done a little bit of chopping on wood here around the house, but obviously I haven't been out camping. I'm actually really looking forward to trying this knife. And it's got a monster blade. The handle's actually pretty comfortable for me, so I'm really excited about this. I will be finding a more permanent place, but for now, if I'm going out into the desert, want something a little bit bigger, the small forest axe is an ideal for the desert. So I'll be bringing this, which means it'll replace the axe on my bedroll. As many of you will recall, I added these Touratech water bags to my bike a few months back. They're 1.1 gallons each. They're awesome. I'm really, really happy with them. They've held up. They're, they weigh nothing when they're empty. I can roll them up, store them, whatever I want to do. But they give me over two gallons of water capacity. So if I'm going out for a weekend, I don't have to worry about water. I don't have to worry about boiling water. I don't have to worry about finding water. I just bring my own water in. There's enough if I'm out for an overnighter. I have a shower attachment, so I can use it as a solar shower, hang it from a tree or whatever. I can use them to wash dishes. This is, to me, a really key piece of gear. And I see people really underplaying their water storage on their gear. gear. But to me, not having to worry about finding a water source, not having to worry about treating water or about water that tastes bad uh, because I, I drink almost exclusively water and it's really important to me that my water tastes good. This works. Bringing in my own water that I know tastes good, that I know is enough quantity is the way to go. So I highly recommend some sort of a water container system and these Tortec bags are absolutely the best that I have found. A few more small items. All of you have seen that I keep one saddle bag where 
with miscellaneous stuff in it, some riding gear, some fire starting gear, what have you. These are some of the things I keep in that. Again, I always carry a small first aid kit. It's not as extensive as a lot of people carry, but it's enough. I carry my water bottle that I've carried with me forever, and this fits just fine down in the saddle bag. It doesn't get in the way, and it's a good way to regulate my water. So I've got all the big water storage, but for my drinking water, I like to keep this full. It's easier to carry with me. I can regulate how much I'm drinking, and it's just a better way for me to use my water using multiple storage sources. Plus, it gives me an extra pint and a half or whatever of uh, water capacity to carry. Also, in that saddlebag, I carry some cordage, and all of you know I like the red paracord because it stands out and gives me some chance of not tripping and falling on my face in the middle of the night. I carry my Swiss Army knife, carry a fire starting kit that includes my Vaseline infused cotton balls and a fire steel and a Bic lighter. And then I also carry my Zippo lighter in my pocket and I've got a fire starter on my bushcraft knife. And again, I've got my bushcraft knife, which is the Mora Black. I still swear by this knife. The uh, new one they've come out with is pretty impressive, but this does me fine and I'm perfectly happy with it. And again, I modified it to keep a fire steel on the knife itself. And that works out great. Then I have my Silky Gomboy. The Silky Gomboy saw actually fits in the bottom of the saddlebag. It takes up al almost no space at all. I carry it all the time just because it doesn't take up any extra space. Now for my kitchen gear. So we start out with my soft cooler. The soft cooler contains everything when I have everything off the bike. This is all my cooking gear, everything I would need to cook on the road. And also keep in mind, this is all of my gear. If I were going to go on the road for a month, this is the stuff I would bring. My gear does change if I'm going to go for an overnighter, if I'm going to go in the desert, if I'm going to go in the mountains. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of gear here, but there are some things I don't take with me every time. So this soft cooler, again, it can contain all of my kitchen gear when I'm storing it. Then I can take the kitchen gear out of it, and you'll notice this is very close to the same size as my saddlebag. All the gear that's in here fits in the saddlebag. Then I have this nice soft cooler I can use for my food stores. And this actually will fit with a day's worth of food in the other saddlebag along with the other things I normally carry. If I want to carry a more extended amount of food for, say, three days, two nights, I'll strap it on top of the wool blanket. So what's in the bag? Well, you saw what I sent to Mario, and I did send him the smaller version of this bag. One of the reasons I did that is these kits are so personal. You get the basics, and then you're going to want to fit it out to suit your cooking needs and suit what you want to do with your gear. So mine has a slightly bigger bag, but that's because I have a few more things in it. Of course, you remember the spork. Mario showed you the spork knife. This thing's just cool. It's one of those things, you know, you see and you, you just want to pick one up even if it doesn't work because it looks cool. So I have that. I have a spatula. And I'm going to be replacing this probably with a 
wooden one that I want to carve. I just haven't found a piece of maple yet to carve it. Same thing with the spoon, uh, cooking spoon. I'm going to be making a wooden one. But again, I haven't found the piece of maple I want to use to do it yet. So I'll get around to that soon enough. My dear friend Jack bought me a two egg egg container. Um, <laughs> I had the six egg one, and many of you have seen the wooden box with ash that I use to preserve eggs, but two fresh eggs right out of the chicken in here will keep for a few days, no problem at all, and so I can carry eggs. I have my Uko lantern, and it's more ambient light and not trip over stuff light than anything else. I'm not going to read by it. but. It's a nice little lantern. It's compact and it fits very well in my kit. I carry some spare candles as well for the Uko lantern. One of my many bags of coffee, which should actually be inside my emergency food bag, but it made it out at some point. My frying pan. And my emergency food bag, and I've described this to everybody. Uh, what's in here kind of changes trip by trip. Never know. I don't even know what's in here now, to be honest. Um, but it's stuff like powdered milk, um, bannock mix, uh, coffee. So could be anything, but that's my emergency food bag. extra Ziploc or two and this was to solve a problem. I've always had round plates. I've got a great little round stainless steel plate. I really like it but it doesn't pack right. It's always the wrong shape and the wrong size and it occurred to me that plates don't have to be round. So I found this rectangular plate online and it turned out to work great. Then it occurred to me that I could make a cutting board by cutting down a cheap cutting board from the store that fits right inside it. And that worked great. So you saw that Mario has the same plate and cutting board. The other cool thing about this plate is if I'm bringing two people, I can just add another one. It doesn't add any storage space. It just fits inside it. So now I have two plates. I'm set for a second person. I also have some sterno and this is in case I'm in an area that fire is restricted, I can use sterno instead of sticks in my twig stove. So speaking of my twig stove, on Amazon I went on and for about 12 bucks bought one of these twig stoves that goes together. I've used it a couple of times. This specific one is no longer available. but uh, if you go on Alibaba, all the Chinese uh, bulk purchases, you can see that there's these are readily available and they just put different names on them. There are better ones out there. Firebox, I believe, is better. But this was $12 and it's what I bought. I have not used it as a twig stove. I have used it with my sterno a few times and it works just fine. So this is my emergency stove. And you'll also notice that's an upgrade from my little Tokes stove. The main reason for that is so that I could use it for sterno instead of keeping the sternos or carrying the separate sterno stove. And the final piece is the zebra pot. Zebra. It's inexpensive. It works. It's got the firebox clips on it so the clips don't fail on you. And it's perfect. Now the reason I got this over my smaller bush pot, the little Tokes pot that I had, is if I'm making 
a bigger meal. If I'm doing something like jambalaya or chili, I want to mix stuff in. I needed more space to cook in. The Tokes pot was great for, uh, for vegetables and that sort of thing, but this is good for one pot meals, and that's what I wanted. So I picked this up. So this bush pot takes a pretty good amount of space in the saddlebag. And as any of you who've watched my videos know, I like to fill up space. I tend to be pretty efficient that way. Well, this is no exception. So in my bush pot, you may recall if you watched Mario's video that his has an insert pan. I don't use that pan. I have it, but I took it out because I wanted the space for other things. So I've got my coffee filter, which takes precedence over everything else. Um, I do have my Tokes pot in here if I just want something smaller to boil water in, uh, to cook some vegetables, or if I need another pot and I don't want to use the cast iron frying pan for it, I have this. Inside this, I have my Yeti coffee cup. And inside my Yeti coffee cup, I have my basic spices, salt and pepper and a few other things. If I want to pack for two people, I have a clean canteen cup, small coffee cup, comes down to an angle, and I can actually fit two of those inside this bush pot and still have plenty of room to put everything else. I don't take the Tokes pot at that point, but then generally I'm cooking for two people, so I'll always want the bigger pot anyway. I also have sugar and some bouillon cubes in here, and I'll put other miscellaneous things, tea bags and that sort of thing in the pot. Anything that I need to store that will fit in there, there's a lot of room. So this is a great place to store some of that miscellaneous stuff, spices and what have you, that you, uh, you need a place to keep. So I have one more piece in my kitchen set. That is my P38 can opener. Absolutely swear by these things, they never fail. It's simple, small, hardest part's not losing it, but I carry a couple and I do want to say one of my viewers sent me some of these. Um, it actually worked out really well because I had just loaned my spare one to my buddy Mark and I couldn't find my other one. So they just seemed to pop up when, I, when and where I need them. I carry them in my car. I carry them in my kit. I've got them all over the place. Nothing worse than having food, having cans, and not being able to get at it. So there it is. It's my complete kit. You can see a lot of things have been upgraded. Unfortunately, a lot of them like the bush pot and the plate were upgraded right before I got my injury. So I haven't had the chance to take them out and get any footage using them. They are tested and they're good stuff. I'm very happy with them. So this is what I use now as my complete kit. Now you're probably looking at all this and say, how's that all go on the bike? I've got the bedroll on the bars. You can see strapped on there as well. I have my Grand Force Brooks small forest axe and my shovel. And the bedroll includes the ground tarp and the self-inflating ground mat and the stakes. I've got the wool blanket strapped to the sissy bar. I secure that on with some paracord that I turned into three strand and put an eye in so it's very secure. Doesn't have the stretch that you get with bungee cords. Got all my kitchen stuff in this saddlebag. And in this saddlebag, I have all of my galley wear and also my emergency food bag. And I also have my rain poncho. 
but all of my galley wear, all my goodies there are stuffed in this saddlebag. I've got everything else, including, including the cooler and the other saddlebag. In this saddlebag, of course, I've got my gloves that I carry with me. My other Touratech water bag strapped to the top. And then I have my first aid kit, my Swiss Army knife, and my soft cooler. I found these soft coolers to be indispensable. They work fantastic for carrying everything I want to carry. I can carry enough food for an overnighter with it in the saddlebag. And if I want to carry more food than that, I take it out of the saddlebag and it'll expand and I can strap it on top of the wool blanket. Also in there I have things like some of my personal items, my journal, my knife, and what have you. So all of that. Some of you also probably noticed my helmet. People have sent me a few stickers and I've been putting those stickers on the helmet. Uh, Flying Squirrel Outdoors, I did receive yours. I haven't put it on the helmet yet, but that's next. Uh, Jungle Jay's Adventures, dude, it's a big sticker. It's as smooth as I could get it. I'm not a decal guy, but it's on there. And Bug Out Brad is no longer Bug Out Brad. I'll put a link to his new channel name on there. But by the time I got your stickers, they you weren't Bug Out Brad anymore. But they're still on the helmet. So there it is. That's everything packed up on the bike and ready to go. It's com pretty compact. And this will last you anywhere you want to go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.